All right. Hello, hello. Um, hi, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well. It is I, Mr. Lopez. Um, back here again, week three, um, here to give you the beginning of our web series this this week. I will be just be going over some um, rote examples, some examples that we can play on our instruments, and then just some different rhythms that we can do in our bow. Um, okay, cool. Let's let's just dive in. Okay, cool. Um, assuming everyone's in tune. If not, make sure we tune it all in tune. Um, uh, Dr. Barnes should have sent an email uh, relatively um, earlier, so that if you're having trouble tuning your instrument, the email slash video, which is connected, um, will help you uh, with all that, all that jazz. All right, usually tune it up, I guess. Yeah, tuning takes a good bit of our, um, in the more, um, just to preface, uh, tuning is a great time to just warm up, get our bodies back into moving like, uh, an instrumentalist does. Um, when we are tuning, if we are tuning by fifths, or just tuning in general, make sure we're sitting, I'm having a steady bow, and creating a good, stable, focused sound. Um, at this point, for open bows, really relax the hand and see if you can't focus the sound into creating a very stable sound. On both up and down directions. Down and up. Alright, cool. Let's just do some um, open string patterns. Um, I just follow my lead. I will sing the response. I'll do the, um, the call and the response, but I'll sing the response. Um, just so that you have it in your ear in case. Um, if you're having any troubles with speed, um, uh, YouTube has the option of like going faster or slower in the video. So if, if you feel like I'm going too fast, feel free to go to like, um, if this is the video, right? I guess it's like over here, um, the options of like speeding the video up or if it's like too much of a, ah, this is nothing. You can speed it up and like see if you can't keep along. But I would just do some examples in a nice steady tempo as much as I can. If not, the speed options are there. Okay, just open bows open open strings as now, starting on A string. Two, ready, go. A, 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 good. Bases and violins. Good! That's all the strings. Let's keep doing some more. As far as adding now, those are all quarter notes. Cool. Quarter, 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 quarter. Those are all quarter notes. Now let's see if we can do them. We use some different rhythms, just some quarter notes and eighth notes, maybe some half notes. We'll see. Two, ready, go. Hey, hey. I 
can't sing that low. Uh. G, C, C. Let it be an octave lower for the vi violas and the cellos. Okay, cool. Um, sorry for that little rough landing for the uh, Cs, but again, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a viola on me. But we can do it the best that we can. Now let's just do add some, just some um, fingers as um, some other notes. So we can now do D E F sharp G and A B C sharp D. Um, I might throw in some low twos, as in D E F natural and A B C natural. I'm just gonna be working on D, D string and A string, so you don't have to worry about other notes like on the E string or C string. Just D and A. Okay. Two. Ready, go. D, D, E, E, E. E, E, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. G, G, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. E, E, D. Sharp G A A A A B A G G A G G F sharp E F sharp E D D F sharp B C sharp B A B A G F sharp F sharp D E F natural F natural E D F natural G A A G F natural A B D again A B D C natural B C natural C natural A A C natural B B A G F natural E A G F natural E E E A D D two again out D D E F natural E F G A A B G F natural E F D D D D D F C natural C natural C natural C natural D C D D B B C natural B A B A G F natural F natural F F natural oh F sharp F sharp F sharp F sharp F sharp E E E E E D F sharp A D Okay. Uh
those are some warm-ups. Um, you can just make these on your own as far as um, sticking notes to either uh, the D major scale, that's all we were playing, or the D, a D natural minor, or just those notes, just making up some patterns. It can be whatever pattern in any way you want. That was just all D, D natural minor, just making up some rhythms, what you think sounds best, make this your own. I mean, these patterns could be, these patterns are played everywhere in music, but it doesn't mean we can't create our own music with it. So, I challenge you for the upcoming week and for the, you know, rest of the semester, see if you can make um, some, some of your own music. As far as, um, sometimes it's nice to just play away on our instruments and see what comes up rather than, um, I mean, of course, practice, please practice, goodness, please practice, but um, again, see if you can't. Make some, yeah, make, uh, um, please practice, but, um, of course, see if you can't make up some of your own music, just to have fun in these, um, trying times. Well, thank you for, um, thank you for coming, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, and have a great day, have a great, uh, have a great, have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's Mr. Miller here again. I hope you're all still doing very well. I'm going to help you guys with some more rope patterns this week, and we might do a scale when we're done. And by might, I mean we will. So, as a reminder, rope scales are going to be me playing four beads of any note pattern that I want, and then you'll repeat it after me once I count you off, okay? Here's the first one. Think about what note I started on. One, two... Ready, go! Good. And while we do these, keep in mind what I told you guys last week about eighth notes and quarter notes. When we have quarter notes, we're going to use all of the bow. Nice full bow so we get a nice resonant sound that rings into the spaces that we're practicing in. And then eighth notes are going to be very short. So... help you guys to think about what we talked about in class when we did these. It would be down, tip, tip, up, frog, frog. If you find yourself having difficulties playing at the right parts of the bow, stop and just say down, tip, tip, up, frog, frog, while you're air bowing along with me so it becomes a little bit more easy for you guys. So at any point, feel free to do that instead of playing. But then of course go back and play it after you feel comfortable. Here's the next pattern. One, two, ready, go. Really nice, really nice job. Let's do that one more time because that was the first time we played at F natural this week. So let's make sure that cellos, fingers are not quite touching but they're pretty close together same for the bass and my viola and violin friends make sure that your one and two are really touching because you have to be they have to be best friends in this pattern because this would be e your first finger f natural and then this note would be g if we were on the d string so let's try that one one more time i'll go first <laughs> Great job. One, two, ready, go. Really nice job. Don't forget to make those quarter notes really nice and long, because if we start off with really short bows, might have the tendency to have short bows right after that but make sure that when we're doing quarter notes they're nice and long i think that this is a great point in the video for us to do a bow hold check basses and cellos our fingers should be nice and relaxed over the stick like this i'm going to make one minor adjustment adjustment for my violin and viola friends 
Make sure that your pinky's on top. It's nice and curved. It is not going to be touching this metal guy right here, but it's going to be on the stick and curved on top of the stick like this. And also, we can talk about our position. Make sure that we're sitting or standing. If you're violin, you can be standing, but if we're sitting, make sure you're on the front half of your chair. Make sure your feet are nice and flat on the ground. You can do a couple of stomps as that helps remind you. And let's continue going. Um, so think about what notes have we played so far. We played C, D, E, and F natural. I want you guys to use your brains right quick and tell me what scale do you think that that outlines? What scale has those notes in it? Think about C and F. Right, so we have F naturals and C naturals, which means that we would have no sharps at all. And what key would that be? It would be C major, right. So let's keep that in mind and we're going to continue going. Starting back on C on the G string. <laughs> Two, ready, go. Great job. So those were all very smooth, very long bows. So let's try it one more time, keeping in mind that we want to make the sound as continuous as possible. I'm going to play it two times, and I want you to guys to tell me which one you like better. <laughs> guys say the second option because it sounds better and I want you guys to do that. Let's try it all together one more time. One, two, ready, go. Great job, my turn. That one was a little trickier. Think about it for a second. One, two, ready, Go. Good, let's try that one one more time. And for my upper strings friends, remember the time that we talked about finger independence in class, meaning that we would maybe put down a finger but keep one in the air, like or maybe our middle finger? So for this one, we don't need our second finger. So we'll just do one, one, three, three, and keep our fingers in the air. Even though this is mainly concerning the upper strings, everybody can play along with us one more time. One, two, ready, go. Great job, here's the next one. One, two, ready, go. Great job. Here's the next one. Make sure you're looking at my left hand and see if you can catch on to what I'm doing this time before I say it. One, two, ready, go. Good. So did my left hand move at all while I was playing? No. It was just my right hand. So make sure that when we're doing string crossings like that, we return to a string after we do a string crossing. That was kind of a tongue twister, but I'm sure you got it. Make sure that you're tunneling and keeping your fingers placed down. Feel free to try that exercise again on your own if you didn't do it the first time. One, two, ready, go. Good job. Now we've gone up the entire scale um, doing rope patterns going up, so let's see what we can do if we do some rope patterns that are kind of like in a descending motion this time. One, two, ready, go.
Good, so those were all eighth notes. Even though we're not using a lot of bow, make sure you're using enough bow so you get a nice resonant sound. Because if I use very little bow, it might not sound as good. So even though we're not using a lot of bow, make sure you're still using enough to get a good sound. Now let's try a trickier um, pattern. Hmm, that one has a lot of elements to it. Think about it for a second. I'll play it one more time. Watch my left hand and what I'm doing. Good. So I utilized tunneling in that because I went A, A, G, G. Fingers stay in the same place. A, A, F, F. So not only am I not going in a scale-wise pattern, I'm jumping around with the notes. I'm also asking you guys to do tunneling, so that one's really tricky. If you feel as though you can't get it this time, feel free to practice it once this video is over until you can get it. Let's try that one one more time together. One, two, ready, go. Great job. I know with a little bit more work, that one will be get easier and easier for you guys. And if you feel as though at any point in this video that it was hard for you to play any of the notes because of the maybe the intricate rhythms that I was giving you guys, feel free to go back and play these with just quarter notes. Like for the one that we just did, it could be instead of... It could be... Like that. So now let's do one last pattern, and then we'll move on to talking about the scale. I'm going to start on my F natural. One, two, ready, go. Great job. So now we've gone up and down the entire scale with rope patterns. We don't have quite enough time in this video to go through all the scales together, but I'm gonna play it once for you guys and then you guys can practice it on your own at home, okay? Just like that. So once you feel that you've gotten comfortable with that one, feel free to add rhythmic patterns in there as well, like this. And so forth. That might be a little tricky, but I know you're all very smart and you'd be able to get it. So some things to think about with the C major scale. Make sure that we have low twos for our upper strings and that our, our two is not bringing our third finger back, meaning that when you play F to G, that they're both very nicely in tune. Because a common mistake that players make, especially at your guys' age, is that the G becomes flat or it's just not in tune. So make sure that you have a good distance between your second and third finger. And then for our lower strings, just make sure that you have second fingers the entire time. You don't have any F sharps or C sharps. But that's all for this week. I think you guys are really prepared for what the other teachers have in store for you this week. And I hope you have fun practicing.